Hello everybody, Samurai Carl here, bringing you a complete Hiram guide to uh, 5.5 going into 6.0. This should cover your daily quest grind, uh, farming areas, where to farm infusions, where to farm the actual Hiram pieces, synthesis breakdown, actual XP per synthesis that you can farm, um, how to grade up your gear, how to change your stats, um, pretty much everything you need to know about Hiram and how to level it. So uh, let's get started. First slide I have is the uh, Hiram Daily Quest. Now, uh, General Aurora Quest, which are the lower level ones, you get the low level infusions with. These are the ones you're probably going to start out with at 50. Uh, they're pretty easy to complete. And then you're probably going to move into Western Hiram when you get to your first ancestral level. And you level here um, pretty much until you can do Eastern Haram, until your gear gets high enough to. To actually, you know, farm Eastern on your own, or at least survive the uh, reset raids. Um, so, let's move to the next slide, and let's break these down per zone. So here are your uh, Western Hiram Mountain dailies. You have the Abyssal Legion, Animal Control, Mutated Animals. Uh, you get the Tier 2 Green Infusions from Western, and you get the Tier 2 Radiant Hiram Scrolls, which take you from Tier 2 Hiram to Tier 3. Um, so depending on if you're trying to level up your gear's grade or if you're trying to awaken it, you'll pick either the scrolls or the infusions. Now uh, I have a map of Western Haram. Uh, the quest name and the color match, so the smaller circles on the, on the camps there are where you're going to pick up the quest, and then the corresponding circle is going to be where you farm those mobs. So for Abyssal Legion, they're kind of in two different spots up at the top of the map, and your ammo control is kind of the bottom. And then you have mutated animals, which is uh, kind of there also at the bottom of the map. So these areas, uh, they matter what mobs you kill because the quest specifically asks for certain types like Abyssal Legion or mutated animals, animal control. Um, and the same with, with Eastern Haram, you'll have different types of animals you have to hunt to get those quests completed. So moving on to the next is our Eastern Haram. Now this is where you get the, the good infusions, the blue infusions. Uh, as of 5.5, they're the best infusions you can pick up. Um, you also can get your Tier 3 scrolls, which take you from Tier 3 to Tier 4 Hiram. And uh, depending if you're, you know, again, if you're grinding scrolls to get that gear uh, awakened, or if you're doing infusions to try to level it, you have your options here to pick um, your quest rewards. So let's look at those for a minute, and we're going to move on here in a second. All right. Moving on. That's it. So here's your map for Eastern Haram. Uh, so again, it's set up just like Western. Your quest hubs are corresponding to the color of each quest. So Stop the Abyssal, Abominations, and the Mammoth. So in this area, there uh, each quest has its own quest hub. So you're going to be porting around, grabbing each quest, and then probably getting those done in a raid. Uh, most likely you won't be able to do these solo, even with higher gear. So this will be a big part of your reset raids during the during the day. So let's move on to the next area, which is you're going to be your Aurora dailies. This is your general uh, early ones that you're going to get at level 50. Those are done in Diamond Shores, Reed Wen, Exlock, and Sungold. And they're going to give you the basic infusion and the tier one scroll which get you from tier one to tier two high roam. And again, depending if you're trying to weaken or if you're trying to level, take your rewards accordingly. The only one that doesn't give you scrolls is the uh Diamond Shore quest that gives you three infusions. Um but most of these quests are gonna be done in a daily raid. So you probably won't have to solo these very often. Uh there'll be raids probably running all times during the day. So here's your Diamond Shore map. Uh, Quest Hub is by the Drill Master there in between both faction bases. Uh, you can pretty much kill any mob. They're not mob specific for the lower level quest. You can kill mobs in the zone. Doesn't have to be Abyssal Legion. Could be pretty much anything. And actually be players will count towards this as well. So if you're PPing, you can get that quest done as well. So moving on to the next zone. Here's your Sun Gold Quest Hub. Same thing. Kill pretty much anything, even players. Moving on to Exalock, here's your Exalock quest hub. And the same thing, you can kill pretty much anything in the zone and players. 
and a fourth and finally is Reed Wind. I would suggest that you probably farm in the middle because it's a higher concentration of mobs and uh, better farming area and get things done pretty quick. So that should be it for quests. So let's move along to daily raids. So there are a ton of infusion kits, which are the mid-range green infusions that you can get from your GR, your CR, your Halcyona or Golden Plains battle, depending on how old a player you are and what you call it, and um, your Fall of Aram instance, which you get to do once a day. Uh, so you get the infusion kits from GR, CR, and Sungold, and you'll get the infusions straight up from Fall of Aram. So you can do Halcy twice a day. You can get up to 40 infusions from doing Halcy if you win twice. Um, but the base amount you can get is 24 if you lose twice. So a good amount of infusions from doing those raids that are definitely worth doing because you also get honor. Um, I'm going to do an honor guide later on, but this is going to be more focused on grinding infusions and leveling your Haram gear. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Have infusion farming areas. So... Um, Reedwind, Sungold, Exlock are all going to be the base infusion, and they're farmed only by killing Abyssal Legion mobs. And then your Western Haram Mountains is any mob counts. You can get a drop from pretty much any mob in the zone, and it drops the Tier 2 green infusions. And then same with Eastern Haram Mountains, where you can do any mob in the zone counts, and you can get a drop off of those. Um, that's going to take a while for you to be able to farm there efficiently. I'm saying probably 8 to 10k depending on your class, uh, and you might have to use consumables depending. Um, <clears throat> so if you need to farm just Hiram pieces, uh, armor, or weapons, you can farm those in Diamond Shores or Golden Ruins. Um, so that's pretty much it for open farming. If you're done with dailies and you just want to grind, you can pick one of these areas depending on your gear level and just grind away at it until you get leveled up. So let's move on to the next slide here. Take a drink of water real quick. We have the uh, infusion breakdown where I'm going to break down the synthesis um, and their grades and what you get for opening each uh, type of infusion. So if you get the basic unidentified, you'll get uh, Grand, Rare, and Arcane. If you open the Tier 2, the Mysterious Green infusion, you're going to get uh, let's see, Rare, Arcane, and Heroic. And then if you open the Radiant Haram infusion, you're going to get uh, Heroic, Unique, and Celestial. So these all have different XP totals. Um, so um, it's worth opening the green and blue ones you can open the lower tier ones. And 6.0, uh, I know in Korea you can upgrade those to blue infusions. Um, I think with blue salt bonds, I'm not highly sure that's the case yet. But when confirmed, I'll update it. I'll let you know what infusions you can upgrade. So this is the breakdown. I'll, I'll let you take a look at it, and then we'll move on. Okay, so here are your Hiram scrolls so you have your tier one scrolls your tier two and your tier three so on your tier one you need 10 scrolls to rank up to the next tier of Hiram um, and it has a 10% chance and if you fail you get a 5% added success bonus so every time you fail you do get a bonus so eventually you will be able to awaken your gear it might take a couple attempts I know a couple of my pieces took about 10 attempts to awaken to tier uh, 3, so, you know, that was a lot of, a lot of grinding, um, just depending on your RNG. This is pretty much the only RNG left is this and rolling stats. So, and then you need 25 for the tier 2 Radiant Scrolls to try to awaken to tier 3 Hiram, and then you need 50 of the tier 3 Brilliant Scrolls to awaken from tier 3 to tier 4. Um, so there are items called quills, and we'll move to that on the next slide here. So on the previous slide, we had the scrolls, and here we have the quills. So I kind of have this broken down. Uh, the first quill, quill on the uh, left here is your tier 1 quill. It's going to take 50 scrolls, turn it into a sacred Hiram Awakening scroll. That's going to give you a 50% chance to succeed 
um, and a lower chance to crystallize. And then here I have the tier three quill here in the middle, which takes 150 of the highest grade squirrels, which are the hardest ones to get, but it gives you, I think, a 25% chance to succeed, and it has a 10% bonus if you fail. Um, and then your tier two here on the right, which takes 100 radiant scrolls, gives you a 25% chance to succeed, and then it gives you a 10% bonus if you fail. So that's the quills. Uh, my recommendation for these, if you use these, I would only use these if you don't have the honor to buy the decrystallization scrolls. So um, you actually get better percentage to succeed if you just use the base amount of scrolls and fail if you can decrystallize your gear. Um, so it's actually it saves you a bit of gold and a bit of a headache if you can decrystallize your gear. Um, just use regular scrolls. Otherwise, these are a good option if you don't have the ability to get a decrystallization scroll and you don't want to risk crystallizing a piece of your gear. So uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, upgrading your scrolls. So if you have a bunch of tier ones, but all your stuff is tier three and you need to upgrade your scrolls, you can get to the uh, Proven Warrior Workbench here in any of the major cities, which is Marianopol and Astaria. And you can take five of one scroll and turn it into the next tier. So five basics into five tier twos, five tier twos into one of the celestial scrolls. So that's five into one going all the way up. Take five of any scroll to get one of the next. That being said, we'll move on to the next. Changing your stats. So <clears throat> if you have a stat and you need to reroll it, there's a little um, right here, you have a replace effect. So before you drop your item in this window, hit place for effect, effect here, put the item in, and it'll give you a chance to use your rerolls. So I have one change attempt on this item I took a screenshot of, and I can reroll any one of these stats, and I have a chance to get a new stat. Um, do keep in mind if you roll your main um, stat here like intelligence you can only get intelligence strength stamina agility and strength so you can only get or spirit sorry only one of the be the base stats as for the other two it's random you can get pretty much anything like magic attack critical damage um, you know attack power so on and so forth depending on what you roll um, so to get change attempts, all you have to do is grade up an item. Um, for each grave that you move up, you get one attempt. So as you move up grades in each tier, you get more attempts to change your stats. Um, sometimes you get lucky and you get all those chats, stats changed <clears throat> pretty quickly. Um, otherwise, if you get your piece of gear maxed out at tier four and you still have that one stat you want to change, you can buy serendipity stones for honor. Um, I think the 30 count honor. Um, I know in 5.5, you can also buy them from the credit shop, uh, depending if there's packs available. Um, also, in Unchained, you will only be able to buy them for honor, as far as I know. So if that changes, I'll update that. Um, that'll be something we'll do in a later video. So moving on, show you the stats that you can get. These are the basic stats here. And then your range, melee, magic damage as your bundle too. They can go in either of the two bottom uh, stats on your higher gear. On to the next slide here. So um, this is the final slide. This is the full XP breakdown um, of each piece of higher. I'm going from tier one to tier four through all the grades that are available. So this is for 5.5. So mythic is the highest grade you can get higher. Um, um, but in 6.0, they are adding Eternal. Um, it's either 6.0 or the patch right after. So um, you should be able to get it to the max grade. Um, and that's at Tier 4. So you're not going to have to awaken to Tier 5 or anything. So no more scroll grinding. You're just going to be able to feed Infusions and get to uh, Eternal. So that's pretty much it for this breakdown. I'm hoping this kind of gets you caught up on Hiram Gear and how to level it. Um, 
I've said this in a previous video when I did a basic breakdown that um, there are going to be pre Hiram sets you get as you level. It uses the same synthesis system as Hiram. So you'll be able to get that from quests um, as you level and you'll be able to level that up and then turn it into Hiram gear. Tier 1 Hiram. That'll start your journey at, at level 1. So you'll be able to uh, easily transition into Hiram gear and get leveled quickly in Aurora. So that's it for me. I do stream three times a week on Twitch. I have my Twitch in the description below. I also have my Twitter and my Discord. I'm going to post these slides and my spreadsheets uh, in my Discord. So if you want to go ahead and join that and grab that, that'll be available for you. Um, again, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully I will see you all again. Have a good one.